We will defend this uh, in court, being that there's been a case brought forward. However, um, uh, we reiterate, a constitutional amendment was not required. No, no uh, need to contact the provinces. All right, that's the new heritage minister saying there's no constitutional debate about the um, next uh, king or queen. It will be a boy or a girl. Now we know it will be a boy. The third in line for the throne as the baby boy is born to the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. What does all this mean, though, for the relevancy of the monarchy and other issues? Guess what? We have convened our power panel here. Royal boy panel today. It looks the three like wise men. The three wise men here. Rob Silver of Crestry Strategy is in Toronto. Tim Powers of Sumo Strategies is here. And Ian Kapstick of Media Style is here. Uh, I'm going to start in Toronto. Oh, God. Right, with Rob Silver. <laughs> Rob, today of all days. Uh, You've got the frankincense. Uh, how, on a... We have a, there's a poll out, there's a number of polls always on the monarchy uh, forum had a poll out in May saying that about 45% of Canadians would not like to see the royal family continue on as the, you know, the king or the queen of Canada after Queen Elizabeth. Rob, how, how much does a royal baby change the relevancy of the monarchy to Canada? Uh... I don't think it changes it at all. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how divisive a little baby can be in some ways, in the sense that you talk to anybody at the, the local coffee shop today, and uh, half the people, it seems, are sick of this, hate it, uh, and not being hipster about it. You know, like, like I, I, I was uninterested in the royal baby before it was cool to not be interested in the royal baby, and there are other people who are obviously very interested in it. So I don't think this baby changes anything. Uh, I think there's an interesting possibility that if the royal couple weren't good looking, that we wouldn't be talking about it mm, sure. the same way, but they are good looking, and we are talking about it, and those who think the, uh, the monarchy is an important Canadian institution will think this is a really important story and those uh, who are snob about this will uh, probably barbecue steaks maybe sausages in the backyard this evening I was talking to uh, my mother who has a little bit more experience with birth uh, than I do and also was once a member of the IOD, the Imperial Order of the Daughters of the Empire. Uh, and she was talking about the coverage today. She thought it was actually a bit too much. She thought in this time, that, that although not appreciating necessarily social media and the like, that's not to say you're not technically literate, Mom. Uh, <laughs> but but she, she thought that it was a little overdone, a little too much uh, in the face. She's more of the traditionalist, though. So to Rob's point, this won't impact her one way or the other, I think what it does do is maybe connect with a few younger people who have an interest in that and who, as Rob has outlined, you know, William and Kate have a celebrity appeal. They've been good messengers for the crown. Uh, they've, they've adhered to the morals and the traditions extremely well. And a child is a celebratory thing. And you know what? I'd love to talk about the royal baby all summer because it's a damn sight better than talking about the Senate. <laughs> well, so could we do a royal baby every well, night? Listen, I, I, I want to hear it again, but i got to say, I've got a lot of people tweeting me and I, there's a lot of hardcore saying this is not hashtag not news why are you devoting any coverage to the royal baby there's lots of news going on nonetheless when you do any polling about this people want to hear this news it's massive news it's and on every network and all the newspapers this is the big news it's in my vested interest Evan to tell you that it's not news I'm your resident Republican of course on the panel I, I no truly none at all I, I truly dislike these celebratory days for the monarchy I hated the wedding I was a curmudgeon then I hate the birth why because it's not particularly good for republicanism uh, Charles was the best best <laughs> thing to happen for republicanism Charles and Camilla um, and alas the more and more they get replaced by this young good-looking celebrity couple the more and more I fear that we won't not have a Canadian monarchy sometime soon because let's How face it monarchies it? are horrible well, no, did, I mean you're, that's you're the serious your point. part okay this. yeah so what is this here I mean is the serious the, the, point is the, the, case for the republicanism the, the, the serious point is is that the United Kingdom should not have a monarchy Netherlands should not have a monarchy it's a foolish system that is in essence the vestigial organ of democracy and shouldn't exist vestigial. as a whole um, I truly Doesn't believe it stabilize those who no, the well, monarchists would say it adds stability. Oh, I'm sure they would uh, say you that. You look at Spain. In Spain, you know, the king of Spain stabilized in the post-Franco era. They say monarchies lead to stability. Well, I, I would suggest that many monarchies have fallen and thus not particularly been too, too stable but, for their heirs. But you know what? Rob was on a, on a good point. In a world of TMZ where vestigial is a word not many people know, uh, these, this couple and their child are a great 
brand. They're yeah. a great brand to connect with. I know with. Charles and Diana, so that's why I have hope as a Republican that the scandals are about to come. All it takes, let's face it, no, no. When you say, invest this much in the future of an individual couple, all it takes is uh, one good royal affair. But it wasn't that and long I'm more than ago at, the, ta at the, the time of the death of Diana when people were talking about the death of the monarchy because of the way the Queen held it at the mm. time. They've rebuilt themselves significantly. This is their leaping off point. Ian is right. There could be a scandal that knocks them back. But so far, they've managed and charted this very well. Let me bring I, you, Rob. I, I, I mean, what like, is this brand? You called it a brand, Tim, Rob. Yeah. What does the brand represent? Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's the brand. It's like a lot of. Uh, look, Canada's an amazing country. One of the things that made us an amazing country is the stability, is our history. So while I am certainly not a big fanboy in terms of the royals, and I am not one of those guys who goes on Twitter and is obsessive that the only reason we're a great country is the monarchy and our historical links to the crown. Uh, all you have to do if you're a Republican is propose what you're going to replace it with and get that approved. We of course have the sovereign right to replace the. Canadian queen or a future king with whoever we want, whatever system we want, you just need to go through the amending formula and get it approved. And that's where the devil is. But so, there is a lot so of, of politics. All the challenge, of all the challenges we face as a country, it's similar in a lot of ways to the Senate debate. It's not high on the list, I think, of challenges. But this it's is but, not but high, it has on the list of high up on the list because this government, Tim, mm -hmm. has decided to put royal in front of a lot of things to strengthen roots back. They'll say their argument is if you talk to, for example, Canadian veterans, these are very big issues because they fought for mm -hmm. the crown and they want to keep that connection. But this has become a very political issue tied, frankly, to the Harper government. Well, let me bring in Arthur Franzarelli. I don't know how I'm going to make this work, but remember, I don't know, I'm going to be serious You're here. You're going to jump now. the shark. Uh, well, I'm not going to jump the shark. I'm actually going to stay, stay in the Thames here with this okay. one. Uh, Tony Blair, when he came to power in 1997, talked about cool Britannia. The royal couple kind of is the modern cool Britannia. And the Harper government likes this because part of that coolness is the link between tradition and the future. And these two represent the future well. I think we drive back to the know, change. Well, I can't hear you. Okay, Tim, Tim, Tim Rob, Rob was making a good argument about the debate and how you should move it forward in terms of republicanism uh, and, the, and the current system. But you know what? A thousand pictures that we have seen today of Kate and the millions of pictures we're going to see of the, ba see of the baby make that a hell of a lot more interesting than the arcane debate that many will view, the, the discussion you know, about republicanism but, but and a constitutional monarchy. But it's not monarchy. just an arcane debate because it's a debate about symbols. The Harper government made a right. very a significant change. Take a look at the, this cabinet photo compared to the last. There's a large Nova Morisot piece that is no longer in there, replaced instead by one of the most god-awfully boring uh, paintings of the Queen that I've ever seen. Um, and what is this about? This is about bringing forward these connections because they believe it will drive back to a more small-c conservative Canada. It goes along the same lines as replacing royal and the various military names and going to crowns and pips. It is, in fact, about slowly but surely changing the way we view ourselves as capital-C Canadians. And, and you know what? I think that um, all of those various paintings that have been removed, while they seem like really small things, when you start to put them all together, it seems like we're eschewing um, our own culture, our own distinctly Canadian culture, for something that is distinctly British. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I dislike both of the polls, and not surprisingly. Mm -hmm. I dislike the return to the past, in, in large part because of the Quebec angle uh, to it and how alienating it is to Quebec. I don't think that's We're new helpful. Canadians. Uh, I, I, I dislike the, the TMZ, uh, you know, entertainment tonight, the violation, I don't know what the word is, uh, of the Royals. Look, Jay-Z and Beyonce were in Toronto uh, this weekend. It's awesome, you know, lots of pictures. Uh, that's not why I think the crown, to the extent it's important, uh, is important. And I think that uh, in some ways, to the extent, and Tim has a point, you know, of course the Royals are extraordinarily media savvy. Of course they know what they're doing with this attractive couple, but it does cheapen and it does, I think, in a lot of ways to mean uh, why it's important. It's the rule of law. Like, that's what the, what mm -hmm. the crown symbolizes and why it is important so, uh, institution. Rob, with your legal background, let me just throw back. Oh, what's God, your, what's your view? <laughs> no, but what is your view of this constitutional challenge being headed by two law professors from Laval University? Mm -hmm. We just spoke to one of them. Yeah. Uh, what's, your, what's your take on this? I, I can get worked up about all kinds of really interesting, complex legal arguments. I get why it's uh, important uh, in terms of sovereignty. And I, I get that argument about either Canada is a sovereign 
country or not. Um, it's look, I have a two year old son. Uh, when he is a grandfather, this may be a live issue uh, again. That doesn't mean it's gone away as an issue. This, of course, should proceed through the courts, and of course, the courts should rule whether this legislation is constitutional well, and, and or not, and whether the legislation should be revisited. I don't understand why the Harper government, and this isn't partisan uh, shot, didn't simply introduce legislation akin to what Australia and I think New Zealand right. also introduced. It would have been so simple, it would have achieved the exact objective they were trying to achieve, which I think most people, Republican or monarchist, would support, which is to the extent we have the monarchy as the head of state in Canada, of course girls should just be so, able to be our so head of state. Know. So I just don't, un I don't understand why they took the approach they took. And that approach is they essentially adopted a, the British Parliament's but, but uh, holy cow, legislation getting, and instead of introducing their own. Well, getting, get, getting worked up about this at this point, given, given that it is a boy today, doesn't mean that it should go away. It doesn't mean it's not important. Right, but holy cow, but, it's but important. But Ian can get it's worked hard. up about this if he wants. <laughs> I can get worked up about a lot of things <laughs> that I probably okay. shouldn't. So, I mean, in, in essence, I had a really interesting conversation with a Republican friend of mine in the United Kingdom who works in that particular movement who suggested that this case may actually act as jurisprudence within the British context for some challenges that are upcoming there. Let's face it, though, that fight is truly a fight for Britain, and the folks of the United Kingdom need to uh, uh, come together and get rid of what is, in essence, some extremely bigoted laws that they've had on the books for hundreds of years. The proper place for this fight is in the UK. Right, yeah, I, dis I, dis I, dis I disagree with that, uh, Ian. The, 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 our, we are a sovereign country. Our head of state is our head of state. If we wanted to make Harry our, our head of state, we of course could choose Harry as a head of state. As as there are all kinds of good arguments. Andrew Coyne's written about this, I believe. Others have written about this. You know, the party king would be uh, would be something that would certainly rock the, the monarchy. Right, before I let but you it go, is for us to decide as a country, not the UK. I, I, uh, there is a real interesting constitutional challenge. I mean, mm -hmm. people talk about it because now it's a boy. Maybe it's not relevant, but. Boy, you, know, you think back to 1931, the Westminster, or uh, 82. I mean, these were significant moments, and this will play out. Uh, any guesses on the names? Let's go around. We'll start with Rob, and we'll go to Ian. Uh, Rob. Uh, guess the name. Uh, you know, earlier in today, I thought I was just going to keep yelling names out randomly through the day. I, I, I guess his middle name is going to be Spencer. I imagine there'll be some kind of a tip of the hat to Diana. Uh, what his first name is? Uh, uh, yeah, I'll go with uh, something traditional, but I have no idea. Right. How the yeah. hell am I know? I'm I know, sorry. You know, because, Rob, you know so much about so much. Oh, we, yeah. just, we just go to you as our, as our <laughs> resident genius. Shouldn't I say James or George? James I mean, or James or George that the, is right. That's what, what, yeah. that, uh, what are you going with? Uh, you know, Tim, I, I think Timothy Tim. James and Pip, if you want to call me, I'll give you some advice for your sister, too. <laughs> All right. There it is. The, the power panel there and reaching out a little there at the there end. Ian Capstick, Tim Powers, and uh, Rob Silver are all on the Royal Babies.